there's something very interesting in music that happens regarding the 12 notes and to explain this I'm going to show you a chord that contains all of the intervals and then I'm going to show you a 12 tone row that contains all of the intervals and this particular chord which is known in guitar circles as the Hendrix chord only has four notes which is E G sharp D and F double sharp F double sharp being what sounds like a G natural but actually because the actual name of the chord is E7 with an added sharp ninth which means that the when you get to the octave and there's an E up here one note more in the scale would be get you to your F sharp and that would be your ninth and then to sharpen that ninth it's why it's called a double sharp so you've got this 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 chord and you've got a very very interesting so as that's a G natural you can obviously see that the tension between these two notes is what creates you know this this interesting effect of this chord but can you believe that you can get all of the intervals that are possible from this chord. So we're going to look at this in a little more detail now and uh, see how you get there. And it involves compressing the intervals when they're larger than say, you've got a D and an E here and this D is nearer the octave E than obviously the lower E. So this one is actually a, a, a minor seventh but there's another way of looking at it. So we're going to look at that now. Okay, so we now have our E7 sharp nine up here. Very small. So we've got the notes, obviously, E, G sharp, D, and our effective, we're going to call it G natural just uh, in this instance, just to make it easier. So we're going to call it uh, that is technically a major seventh. So we're going to write out G sharp, G natural, when they're that far apart. It's a major seventh. Now a major seventh, if you were to stick that G sharp from here, stick it up here, you've now got a minor second. And then we've got our D and our effective G natural and that is a perfect fourth so so far we've got we've got a minor second a perfect fourth next we've got a G sharp and a D and that is our tritone that's going exactly intersecting the chromatic scale if you had a D down here in theory that would intersect the octave at exactly the middle point so you think of it like a mirror really so that's our tritone in other words, a diminished fifth. So we'll write that up here. So we need a major second, a minor third, and a major third to get the full set all the way up to that halfway point. Okay, so we've got the E, and 
and the G sharp. This interval here. That's a major third. And we've got our E to D. So E to D normally is a minor seventh. But if you imagine that E going up the octave, the distance between these two to major second. So we've got our minor second and we've got our major second. We're just looking for our minor third now. Now that E to the G natural, which is really is the F double sharp. If you imagine that there's an E up the octave, so that's the eighth note. So this really is, if we're being really pedantic, it's a minor tenth, which is the same as a minor third. So we've got our full set. Now, if you take this set here up to the diminished fifth and you say, do we have a perfect fifth? Well, our perfect fourth, if you add the D here, the interval between G and D is a perfect fifth. So we've got We can have the perfect fifth to the set. Do we have a minor sixth? Well, when you invert some chords, obviously, you can then start to say, well, what happens when you put, you know, let's say, an E on top of this? Or, well, we'll take this one first. G sharp to E. So a major third is also a minor sixth. Now we're looking for a major sixth. Our major sixth is derived from here because if you've got E to E, which is the octave, and E to G natural, which is our minor tenth and minor third, then to generate a major sixth, you need to go from the G natural all the way up to the E here. And there is your major sixth. And then we've already got a minor seventh and a major seventh. So we've got the full set minor seven and a major seventh. So we've got an absolute full set. So that's pretty incredible, really, from just these four notes of this chord to generate all the intervals. Now we're going to go on to look at another example where you can take what effectively is a chromatic scale, rearrange it, and again generate all of the intervals from that. And the composer that famously did this was the Austrian composer Alban Berg.